All right. So we're ready to go? Yes? Uh, not yet. Not yes? yet. Not quite okay. yet. Not quite yet. Hold on a second. Because it's 12 12. Go ahead. Um, all right. It's 12 12. Welcome to Chat with Green Aggies. We're really excited to have you all here today. Um, we've got a super special guest, Dr. Brent Pemberton, coming to us from, from his office at the fabulously uh, beautiful Overton Center. Um, and he is going to share with us uh, a lot of pictures that were not taken in Overton. Um, a lot <laughs> Uh, every every year um, in California, a number of ornamental plant breeders um, kind of get together and hold what they call the California Spring Trials. Only this year it was the California Summer Trials because it was held in June, a little later than the normal time due to COVID. But it they did uh, pull it off this year. And uh, Dr. Pemberton's a regular at the trials. I was so fortunate to get to go with them this year and really enjoyed seeing tons of beautiful plants. Um, it's just kind of amazing. You, you just um, are, will be amazed at, at what you can see there. But um, he's going to tell us about what he did. Um, I'm going to uh, add some things as, as he allows me to. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started on this, on this day where we're all going to dream about the California weather. All right. Yeah, we call it California Dreaming. This is the 2021 session. And I did want to say before I got started that um, uh, Paul and Laura gave a presentation back in July. I think it was on the 22nd. And they talked some also about the uh, summer trials that uh, they both went on the trip this year. And, uh, and so anyway, I, I've tried to construct this program so it would kind of complement those things. Um, uh, Paul talked a lot about the uh, some of the different production aspects and things like that. So anyway, I urge you to go back and if you didn't see that session, go back and watch it because I think it'll complement what you're going to see today. Um, so anyway, and yes, Laura, please jump in whenever you if I miss something or you know you want to add something that that would be that would be great. So and I did just post the link to our playlist on YouTube so that you can go back and watch that program from July after this if you want to. Okay, great. And also, I did want to mention that uh, the names of all of these plants are on the slides as we go. So they will also be in the recording. And then there's also a handout that I put together that I think uh, is going to get posted somewhere where you can, uh, you know, you could actually download that list if you if you wanted to do so at some point in time. So anyway, here we go. Hey, Brent, I, I am going to, uh, as you speak, I will... Uh, post the names in that specific location in chat so that they will have you know the names ready for them okay okay great all right well we started out our tour at american talkie in salinas um, we we flew into monterey and so we started in in uh, uh, northern mid coast area of california and uh, they had a some really nice displays and actually let us in a day the, the afternoon before it was officially started so you could tell that they were had been furiously at work getting everything set up. Um, one of the first things we saw was this delphinium that I hadn't seen before, Jenny's Pearl, and they have a pink and blue. It's one of the cool smaller type uh, that I think does really well in our climate and, and can give you those really beautiful colors that you are hard to get in anything other than delphinium, especially that time of the year in the spring. Um, they have a new Snapdragon series that I thought um, was of note because one of the things I like, it's a small stature series, but for the garden, it has enough height that you can get some good uh, late winter and spring color from these. And also, if you see the individual um, uh, flower heads uh, have, some, have some height to them, um, so you get a little bit more color that way. This is the pink and that's the yellow uh, called the Statement series. Uh, they also had a nice display of the Zinnia Preciosa series, and I had grown these last year in, in the field trials, and they did, they did quite well during the summer. Um, they, they weren't ravaged terribly by disease until towards the end of the summer, of course, which happens to this type of Zinnia in general. 
Um, the only th new thing on this this year was that the uh, the orange is actually available as an individual color where it was only available as a mix uh, prior to this year. I was also uh, really excited to see that they have a new experimental series called the Belize series of this uh, Marilandica type zinnia. And I'm, it, it's, this is a really great plant for us and with the heat, they're, they're very disease tolerant. And so I'm, I just, this is something that's really come on to the, to the breeding scene over the last few years and with the Zahara and Perfusion series. And it's great for us, I think, to see another series that we can use out there. And it does have some breeding uh, objectives of being a little bit more compact. So this, this could have the potential of being easier to grow and also being a little bit more weather tolerant. Oh, they had some experimental peppers, this capsicum onyx orange, along with their uh, new color in the trilogy series of petunia was a nice display. The peppers, of course, this is a little bit early. They'll turn orange. They also have a red one. But anyway, that beautiful dark foliage and very compact growth. They also had a lovely display of their cut flower uh, sunflowers, and I couldn't help but put this picture in there. This is Ziggy. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, Hilverda Florist was also showing at the Taki location, and they, of course, are the supplier of the uh, Garvinia Gerberas. And I wanted to mention in particular Sweet Fiesta, which is one that has lived in th th several locations. I think Paul mentioned this earlier, um, that made it through this past uh, Snowmageddon and, and the whole deal. So anyway, pretty cool plant. And they, they keep adding new colors to this series was, was the point here. And then they also had a salvia series called the Salgoon series that I thought was quite interesting. Um, these types of salvias, I, I don't think these are gonna be perennial here necessarily for us in North Texas anyway. Um, but um, I think these are just gonna add to the palette of the number of salvias that we have annual types and everything in addition to, you know, something like a salvia splendens. And I think these are gonna be more heat tolerant too. Okay, then we went on down, uh, the next morning we got started at uh, Pacific Plug and Liner. And uh, this is their, this is their welcome to the perennial paradise. And, and one of the nice displays that they had and something that, that I trialed this past winter was this uh, new Delphinium series called Delginius. And one of the, um, one of the hallmarks of this series is that it, it doesn't get as tall as you know, just standard uh, type delphinium, which are kind of tough to do in Texas anyway, but they're very well branched. And so you get a nice display in a container and also in the ground. So anyway, that's a pretty cool new series. Also, I wanted to mention these uh, Frost Kiss uh, Hellebores. Um, they've done real well for me. I've had two or three of the varieties. They're not in flower here, so you can you have to see the pictures in the back, but they did have a display and I wanted to mention them because they um, they are a good, good plant for us. Um, and if you go back one, Brent, um, I also want to mention that one thing that was fun for me, I don't know about for you, Brent, but everywhere we went, they would pull out the Aggies for us. And so there's April Herring. Um, Thank you. I meant to mention that. <laughs> and it's, it's a lot of fun to see, you know, there were people that I knew like April and then people that I had never met, but they were all Aggies and it was really pretty fun to, to get to, you know, see how many of our Texas A&M University alumni were working in the Yeah, United. and April's actually the one that always does these displays at PPNL, and they're always really quite striking, so yeah, she's pretty got cool. a really nice eye for yep. things together. And then Carex Feather Falls, I, you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, and I just wanted to put in another plug. They had it all over the displays, and this is an awesome plant in the landscape for us, so... Uh, a new euphorbia, you can see the one with the purple foliage that's mixed in to this uh, display, uh, Miner's Merlot. Um, this is a what we call a more of like a winter euphorbia for us. Um, it's very cold tolerant. Um, it actually lived through Snowmageddon in a container in a slightly protected area. But um, anyway, this, this, is a, this is a way cool plant and actually one of our Texas superstars. It fits in that group that we made a Texas superstar a number of years ago. Um, another thing that, uh, that Paul and Laura mentioned earlier were these super simps, but I had to revisit these in a couple of places here, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later in the talk, but um, the, the size of these things is just really blows you away when you know, you know, when you remember the traditional hens and chicks or whatever, and um, they don't tend to make as many offsets until later, till after they get very big, so um, anyway, pretty cool stuff, 
and I've got a few more pictures of those later too. So they also had, and Laura was probably in heaven on this one, um, because they had a salvia trial that was very complete uh, as far as I could tell. And there's some things that are in here that I'll, that we'll see later in the, in the program as well. So I, I do want to say right up there, uh, back in the back next to April is Sophie who grew out all these salvia for this little trial. And I asked her which one was her favorite and what did she say, Brent? I don't remember. You don't remember? It was Mystic no. Spires. It was Mystic Spires. Mystic Spires. Okay. <laughs> so our, our Texas superstar was her fave. Um, awesome. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Then on to Benary. You're truly trying to take a picture of me. Um, <laughs> but I thought Benary had one of the most striking displays of the week. And um, this is a view of their, of course, everything um, was sympathetic to COVID. You know, a lot of these things were outdoors in the past. Most of the time, these have all been in greenhouses. When we see these, we saw things outdoors. We saw ground beds, things like that, that you don't normally get to see in March, uh, late March and early April when they normally have this. So anyway, this was, this was really kind of fun and, and a new way to see all of this stuff. This is the Marigold Superhero Series. And um, uh, David Charnecki was our tour guide. I, I don't have a picture of him, but he, another A&M, graduate and he was the breeder of this series so it's always fun to see folks do good and they had some new and improved colors in the series as well um, had some new colors in the portulaca uh, sundial series it's a good plant for us and i just had to show a picture of the begonia big series this is the uh, uh benary's the breeder of the big series and also the whopper series which is available through ball but benary was actually the breeder on that so Anyway, these guys know their way around begonias and have really changed the face of begonias the way we grow them in landscapes here, in my opinion. Um, also, the Graffiti 2020 series, um, they had a new color, Cranberry. They weren't quite in bloom yet, but I wanted to mention that new color because it is very nice. Um, also, a new addition to the Avita Lantana series. This one's a little bit more compact. Um, but does very well and is pretty hardy for us. It's, it, uh, this series comes back fairly well for us. So new color in that. They've also uh, introduced several new different new Bidens. Um, this is this one's called Takatuka. And this species is a little bit tough for us because it's not real happy when the humidity is real high. Um, so by late summer, we get a little bit of fading and melting on us. But um, it does pretty well in containers. The colors are so striking, and I can't help but think that this might not be a really good fall plant for us, you know, to use for fall landscaping, containers, whatever. So fun thing to look at. Gallardia Arizona series. These are from seed, and so they're a little bit less expensive, I think, than the some of the vegetative stuff. But this Arizona series is really good about lasting through the heat of the summer for us and continue to flower. And so this is a, a new improvement on the Arizona apricot, which is a very pretty one. The original one actually did pretty well. So, so this, one, this one would hopefully be better. Uh, saw a few lavenders. I'm just mentioning one here and there. This papillon is one that's from seed that has done pretty well for us um, as lavenders go. Lavenders are tough here. The best luck I have is putting them in clay pots. And, um, and that I can even, I even got this one to live through the winter in a clay pot. So. I thought that was quite an accomplishment <laughs> for lavenders. They have some new uh, Della Spermas as well, the Sun, Sun Tropic series. And um, these are very cool plants. There's a lot of new Della Sperma showing up in the market. I haven't had one that was a poor performer yet uh, in a container. Trying to put them in the ground is a different issue. If you're over further west, that might work better. If you're in a rock garden kind of situation, um, but in containers, these things hold up pretty well, even in high rainfall areas. Okay, then moving uh, down the road to Syngenta Flowers, here is our illustrious group over here. You can see from left to right, myself and Laura and Paul and uh, Gary McDonald and Wayne McKay from the University of Arkansas. They used to be Aggies, so we, we let them join our group. <laughs> but, uh, and then also Tim Davis um, from College Station. So um, anyway. They had a, div, a, a section, a kind of a, the, they don't own all of these companies, but it's kind of a, a cooperation between these companies in a program called Think Plants. So we got to see some of the different things from some of these different, different companies. 
Um, from Terra Nova, we saw a couple of the new Agastache that they have, this Paquito orange and butter yellow, which are, which are way cool and are actually doing pretty well in the field trials too, which impressed me. Um, I usually don't talk a whole lot about begonias because these things don't like Texas <laughs> very much. And, uh, but this one is really, really quite striking. And some of these types of begonias actually do okay if you grow them in containers in the shade in a place where you can control the watering because it's all about not overwatering. If you overwater begonias like this, they will rot. And so, so anyway, you can, it's a little bit of a niche specialty type thing that way, but, but still I think something worth uh, taking a look at, especially from a high-end standpoint. Well, and I'll also say here in Fort Worth, we love our begonias. You know, the Fort Worth Botanic Garden has an enormous collection of begonias, and we really, there are a lot of begonia enthusiasts around here. So. Yep, yep. So, uh, this or oriental lilies do fairly well for us, and I don't think I've ever seen an oriental lily that is this compact, that could be grown in containers, that would also probably do well in the garden and stand up to the weather. So anyway, I think this is uh, from the company Unix. And um, anyway, I think, I think this might be worth taking a look at. And not flop over in mm -hmm. the landscape. You know, that's one of the big problems in a landscape is just flopping. Yep. Uh, these Helleniums, um, I think these were a couple of the perennial things from Syngenta Flowers as we transition into their products. And, um, uh, but these these look very nice, and uh, I think uh, these are probably pretty heat tolerant. Helenium has a tendency to be, and so these I haven't tried these yet, but I think they look pretty cool. Another um, uh, technology thing that they mentioned at Syngenta Flowers also was the idea of pre calloused cuttings. I um, mean, you can see in the pictures that they're um, they're showing to get quicker rooting and and quicker establishment and that sort of thing. That's a picture of what they look like. And if you look closely, you can even see, um, like up, up over here, you can even see some little roots starting to poke out already. So anyway, pretty cool. There is a new improved Cleome, the, the Sparkler series. And I have these in the trial this summer. And I must say that they are much improved over what they used to have, especially from the, from the standpoint of retention of lower foliage. Uh, and, and they maintain their greenness as opposed to turning yellow and, and uh, you know, having, um, you know, bare lower area branches and everything, you know, in the latter part of the summer. So I think this is a big improvement uh, on this species. Also, we saw lots of hydrangeas. This is just a good example. Um, these are some of the new series. I think this is from the high series. They've got different colors. There's a lot of breeding in hydrangeas right now. It's generally for more compact, repeat blooming, um, and those sorts of things. So, and also some really cool colors. This is their fire red, which I, I thought was pretty, pretty striking. So anyway, pretty cool new series. And then uh, Syngenta is also known for their geraniums. Um, they're particularly known for the interspecific hybrids that they have created and put on the market. Um, the Calliopes being uh, one of the better known ones, uh, the uh, Calientes, um, Calliope. I think there's, you know, there's several of different sizes and everything that they've put on. And this newer series called the Mojo series is one that, um, that actually has done pretty well for not having as much vigor as some of these other ones, which I think is very impressive because usually a little bit more vigor, you get more heat tolerance in my opinion. And, but, but this one is, is uh, beginning to get some heat tolerance into a little bit smaller plant. This is the dark pink and this is a, the new hot cherry. So nice to see that they're still adding colors to this. The red has done very well in trials. So a couple of new lantanas that they um, are introducing this hot blooded red, I think was new last year. Um, it's, um, it's fairly compact, more, um, um, well, a little bit more compact, more like some of their other series, uh, the band, like the bandana series. Um, this is a new bandolero series, and this series, I think, is going to be really interesting because the bandana series is a little bit Fair, is very compact. This one is supposed to be a little bit more vigorous, so medium vigor. Um, it'll fill out a pot, it'll fill out a you know mixed container, and also have a little bit more umph in the in the garden if you want something with a little bit more size. And Laura, you got a great shot of that with the the Golden Hills of California, and that's another thing you see in the summer. There is everything turning brown with those beautiful oaks 
um, uh, back there um, as opposed to March and April when a lot of those hills are actually green. So yeah, it was anyway. really dry. It was really brown when we were there. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the next day we started out at Cicada and um, this was uh, some of their new large begonia breeding that has come on recently. Um, and, but this is a really new kind of different thing from a lot of the rest of, one, of the ones that are out on the market because this particular part of the Viking series called the Explorer um, is more of a, a spreading type begonia. And that's, that's kind of an interesting concept. Um, so as opposed to them getting very tall, they're going to be a little bit more spreading and, and give you more of a presence in the garden that way. But they still have the large leaves, the nice presentation of the flowers that, that are kind of the hallmark of this type of, of begonia. I also, I love the, the ones with the, uh, they refer to it as chocolate foliage. It takes bronze to a whole new level as, as far as uh, dark color of the leaves and everything. So that's, that's pretty cool too. And I thought, Brent, that we saw a lot of trailing plants, like, you know, salvia, mm -hmm. goofia, begonia. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a lot of trailing. Yeah, a lot of good hanging basket stuff this year. A lot year. of hanging basket stuff, yeah. Some new colors in the Sun Patient series, which just continues to get bigger. Um, this is the, uh, the Vigorous White. We've got a Vigorous Sweetheart White, uh, Compact Deep Red, and Compact Hot Pink. In the past, I've always said that the vigorous ones do a little bit better because they have more vigor um, than some of the compact. But these, some of these new compact ones are kind of surprising me. This hot, hot pink one is doing pretty well. And last year, they had a new compact one called Orchid Blush that um, is just continuing to impress me for the second year in a row now. So, so anyway, it's uh, some colors are always better than others. But, uh, but anyway, they continue to expand and improve this series. Uh, this compact rose glow is another good one and there's just a good overall shot of a lot of the new varieties that they've got uh, in sun patients this year 16 years they've been on the market i guess wow which kind of dates me i remember when they were introduced <laughs> <laughs> So the super cow series and petunias um i think paul talked some about these so i just wanted to mention these as um uh, to, to say that he had mentioned that it might be a good idea to do them as a fall winter crop. And I, I want to say that I concur with that because they say that these are very heat tolerant, but I found these to also be very cold tolerant, even in containers. And so um, I think that's, I think that's kind of a fun thing to do. You can get stuff going for a fall display and just carry it right through the winter and get a late winter and, and spring color as well so and some of those like gold orange like that that container right there in the front that's just beautiful fall color I yep. mean, yep. would want that and then we've also got a couple of new colors on the profusion zinnias a marilandica type um, the yellow bicolor that you see right over here on the screen um, actually you can see some of these you see they start of fade to a different color um, and so as you have these longer in the season in the ground, um, they do produce more of kind of a two-tone effect instead of the old flowers just looking old. And so um, it's really, it's, it's a very cool thing and it, it, looks, it looks good. Um, and also the double red, I've been impressed with because the color doesn't fade in the heat. So this is pretty cool. It's a very nice, strong, dark red color. So useful from that standpoint. Okay, and then here is Doom and Orange, uh, tucked in right on the coast at uh, near Pismo Beach. And uh, so anyway, they got some kudos for location this year, um, as, they, as they usually do. They had uh, several of their coleus on display, the Main Street series. This is Yonge Street. They had also a new one called Bourbon Street. I want to say that that Bourbon Street looked great at the Dallas Arboretum, too. They had oh, okay, awesome. It looked great. I, I really like that one. Yep. I like the leaf pattern on this oh, one. Leaf pattern and the, it just looked really nice too. Mm -hmm. And this one's called Venice Boulevard, which um, I find very attractive. So that's going to look cool. And then this was not in the Main Street series, but one they just uh, kind of a standalone called La Freak. And I think it's probably the beginning of a series. There's a lot of these newer, thinner leafed ones beginning to come out on the market. And I think that's pretty cool because we've been so dominated by the great big 
plants, huge leaves, you know, and all of that. So I, I find it a lot of fun to, to find that we're getting some coleus that are um, a little bit finer textured and that sort of thing. And they also stand up in the sun better than you'd think by just looking at the leaves on these things. And they have, this was a beautiful display, the sun standing series. I do on, on New Guinea and Patience, I do like the variegated ones because even if they do go a little bit less flowering or out of flower in, in the middle of the summer, the variegated foliage continues to carry them. And so I think there's a lot of, uh, lot of merit for, for those types just because of that. They also had with their Magnum series, which is more compact, they had them combined with their Great Fall series of coleus. And I thought, um, you guys had talked last time about some, some mixtures and everything, and I thought this was a particularly good one um, and great because these are good, both good shade plants for us. And so this is a, would be a really good, awesome shade mix container. And this is specialty things. This is not going to be a midsummer kind of item. This is a spring or fall item, obviously, but it's a geranium. And I think some of these old fashioned type geraniums um, are really pretty, pretty neat. They've got the, I just think the combination on this one of the leaf pattern, the green edge, the color of the flower with the color of the foliage and everything is just particularly striking. So for a niche market at certain times of the year, I think that this is something that, um, that everybody should consider. And I would buy that and take it home and put it on my patio for two or three months in a heartbeat. <laughs> also, I said I wasn't going to talk very much about begonias, but I couldn't help myself. This one is so gorgeous. Um, and again, these types are, it's not so much that the heat gets them. It's if you try to grow them in a place where you can't control the watering, because if you overwater them, they are dead. So anyway, lots of improvements being made in uh, tuberous type begonias. So not that awesome? Okay, speaking of, of uh, hanging basket plants, this is one called Hummingbird Falls. We saw it here and at Plant Haven. I've got some more pictures of it. And this is a, a pretty cool salvia and has that. And you can also do this with it. <laughs> so you can just use your imagination on different ways to do this. And uh, this was another display out at, at the Duman place. And they had a, a kufia called Hummingbird's Lunch. Yes. So Molly from Duman at and the Dallas uh, talk part said not to put that in a container with anything else because it would eat whatever else was in there. Oh, so, good to know. <laughs> want to grow that salvia, uh, just, just do it by itself. It'll, do it it'll by itself. <laughs> that makes sense because it looks like it's pretty aggressive, yeah, which is, which is a good thing. Really aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and this is one called Hummingbird's Lunch. Um, pretty cool. Um, I've I, uh, none of the kufias that I'm familiar with have this kind of a habit where you could do this with. So this is cool, cool new development. They I had a, tons of pictures of that with hummingbirds coming to it, you know, and it, it, I think it probably would be a great like living mm -hmm. hummingbird feeder. Yeah, probably. yeah, especially the yeah they love kufias. Yes, so you can hang that outside your window. There you you won't have to make sugar water. <laughs> They also have the new Lantana Heartland series, which um, is kind of a medium vigor uh, type series, but lots of new colors. And then this uh, Phlox Flame series, there's a couple of Phloxes I wanted to talk about during the presentation today, and this is one of them. Um, uh, I've grown several colors of this and it, it does last uh, fairly well. It's not a really long lived, but, um, but did come back for two or three seasons for me. And they've got a new, uh, improvement on this series called the Flame Pro, and this one's called Pink Pop, and that that was uh, just particularly stunning to see that many flowers on, you know, one container like that. So I'm not sure how many plants were in there. I bet there were three, you know, but still, that's, that's pretty impressive. Okay, then moving uh, on down uh, the coast a little bit, uh, this is uh, the location where we had Plant Haven and Suntory together. Um, We'll start off with Suntory here, and this is their uh, new Mandevilla Sun Parasol Sunbeam, which is a gorgeous bright yellow. Um, so anyway, it's pretty cool. And it looks to be a pretty bushy type, though. I think it does throw a few loose uh, strands that you could either encourage to climb or you could trim back, um, depending on what you want it to do. So they also, they uh, of course, these are not new, the soiree. Um, uh, Kawaii Vinca, but they did have some nice mixes that I, that I thought was good this year. They've got enough colors in the series now that you can do things like this. Berry Blast, 
And this one's called Lady Liberty that I thought looked, looked pretty good for a red, white, and blue uh, type combination. Um, and then this is just a picture of um, all the different uh, colors, some of the different colors in the series. So the okay. coral reef that you see there in the center was new last year, and it's a little bit more compact. And I think a little bit more towards where this series is going, and they may even eventually have a couple of different sub-series or whatever, where you've got more compact and then something that's a little bit more vigorous. So, so how many years have those been out? It's been maybe... I want to say four or five years. Four or five years. I, yeah, I'd yeah. say that that's a plant that's really grown on me because at first I was like, why do you want a little bitty flower? You know, I, I was just kind of, you Exactly. Know. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. When you got all these great big ones out there, yeah, you know. They're, they're actually quite adorable. And, um, uh, you know, out walking my dog, I saw some in a landscape in my neighborhood and they just look great. Just, just yeah. like last week. So I was like, that's impressive. And they just bloom like that all summer. They never quit, yeah. you know. So they're, they're pretty awesome plants. plants. I take it back. My, my, my first impression was wrong. Yes. <laughs> Same here. Okay. okay Bractiantha, uh, these, the new Granvias, um, this Granvia gold is really awesome in a container. Now, if you're in a real high humidity area, this is not going to be something that's going to make it through August, but at the same time through spring and up into midsummer, this is, this thing is just amazing and i think as you get to more arid parts of the state towards interstate 35 and up on the high plains you're probably going to have you know and out west texas you're probably going to have really nice luck with this especially in containers so big flowers just really beautiful and here's some of the new experimental colors um, that are coming down the pipe in the series so anyway lots to look forward to in this lots of good vigor and it has good heat tolerance and really pretty good tolerance for this species to heat and humidity in my opinion um, the uh, Scavola Sardiva series um, that Suntory has continues to get better. They have a white improved, which you can see in the center of the screen up here, which has been really spectacular and it stays very compact, but yet really good performance um, when you get it out into the field. So anyway, just a good general series. And they've also got an experimental one back here that's yellow. Um, I, the jury's still out on that, I guess. But um, anyway, the other colors have done done very well. And then also in the uh, in, with the Vinca, they are starting to um, introduce some of these flamenco part of the uh, soiree series. And this is Senorita Pink with the, the frilly petals and everything, which is, which is uh, I think this is going to be a little bit more of a niche type thing, maybe more for containers. Um, but um, anyway, it, it's very interesting. And this is a beautiful uh, color combination. Uh, you know, with the with the shape of the petals and everything. So anyway, I think a lot to look forward to in that group. Hummingbirds lunch again. This is at Plant Haven and Plant Haven was the company that's handling the introduction of this plant, which is being picked up, obviously, by other companies. Um, so this is Hummingbirds lunch and Hummingbird Falls. Now they've called it Bodacious Hummingbird Falls here. Um, so so that's another name that you might see it under. Um, but again, Pretty awesome plant. I wanted to mention this dahlia that they have. Um, I have grown one called Mystic Illusion, which looks very much like this, except it has a yellow flower um, that has been three or four years in my garden, which is kind of amazing for a dahlia. And so I have great hopes that this color will join it in having the longevity that the that the other one has as far as um, being garden worthy for us, because we, there's not a lot of dahlias that do well in Texas. Yeah, Does so your yellow one have that same dark foliage like yes. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's probably really pretty. I mean. It is. It's a beautiful contrast between the colors. And Super Samps, I'll mention again, This uh, at this location, they had a, a good uh, place where I could get a picture of some of the different sizes. Um, and I don't know, they're claiming that you can go six weeks or 12 weeks to that one gallon container, six weeks in the court and six weeks to fill out a gallon. Um, I'm thinking it may take a little longer than that, according to some of the things I'm seeing from them now. But, but anyway, I think, I think you and Paul mentioned last time we've gotten some sent out to, we've got some in Houston, we've got some in here at Overton, we've got them in Arkansas and up in Wisconsin so that we can compare what these things look like and how they perform and also up on the high plains in Lubbock. So we've got a lot of different environments to kind of see what kind of colorations we get and um, things like that. They're supposed to be hardy to zone four, so, so we shouldn't have that issue. <laughs> so anyway, 
pretty cool plants. We'll see, we'll see what happens on that. It's a close up, close up of some of the different varieties that are available. Uh, went to uh, Hem Genetics um, and they had some they had some fun things. They had this uh, Diantha series, um, which was very nice, the Diana series. And uh, they had a lot of interesting colors. This lavender picotee I thought was uh, fairly unique um, for, for Dianthus. And these have a nice, nice plant habit. So anyway, I, you know, good, obviously fall winter type plant for us in the garden. Also this salvia red hill is intriguing to me. I have not tried it, but it's got a lot of vigor for a salvia splendens. This is a big one. And, and to me that usually gives more heat tolerance um, I think another mistake that we make with this plant is that we need to realize that it is a very heavy feeder. And mm -hmm. so you've got to stay up with the fertilizer on this thing um, to, to keep it going. So anyway, and deadheading doesn't hurt, which is a little bit of a maintenance thing. But, um, but anyway, it does, it does keep it look, looking cleaner if that's important. Um, at Beacon Camp, they had a new Kalanchoe series, the Tiger series, um, which I thought was just interesting from the standpoint of, a, the, the, these are potted plants, of course, instead of a really that much of a garden plant. Um, but they do have a lot of longevity, good good for that. And uh, But any, I've never seen a Kalanchoe that's got this combination of the eye in the, in the flowers and everything, and also large flowers um, for a Kalanchoe as well. Uh, the Celosia series, I think these are worth taking a closer look at. Um, I have heard reports that these are fairly heat tolerant, so a um, lot of different variety in that series as well. So it's almost more of a collection than it is a series. And then they had uh, a, some nice begonias. And these, this is a Riger begonia. So this, again, is going to be a little bit more of a potted plant type, type thing. But I still think this can be a good crop for Texas uh, to be used in that manner. Um, they do have some other different things in this series. You can see the hanging basket ones. Uh, to the left and up above. Um, at the same time, some of these Brazilianses type like that hanging basket one up on the top, don't, they will take the heat, but they won't take over watering. So I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> I've killed a lot of them that way. Okay, then we came to our final stop at Ball Horticultural, and these are all the companies that are, are represented at the Ball, uh, ball site. And so we there uh, obviously there was a lot to look at here and we spent a good portion of a day um, going through this particular site. One of the things that greeted us on the way in was a, some, some cut flower fields that they had put out and they have this new um, uh, initiative called the uh, uh, Bloom Studios and they call it Cut Flower Innovations by Ball. And so they're beginning to try to put together more information and, and cultural sheets and things like that for a lot of the varieties that they have that are cut flowers. Um, and try to consolidate it into one program instead of being scattered over different different uh, areas of the company. So anyway, but that was that's pretty spectacular to get to see that. So going through um, uh, Pan American Seed, we saw um, some of the well, uh, Paul and Laura, you guys talked about the kitchen minis, mm -hmm. uh, which which is a very cool program. You see some of those down there at the left, but then these these basil, the Thai towers in the front and emerald towers on the right. Um, our two new basils that they've had, uh, uh, Thai was this year and Emerald Towers last year or two years ago. And um, anyway, they just have this very upright habit. They, they're very late to flower um, and they don't flower that much. And so anyway, they're just, they're really cool. They have, you know, nice flavor, good vigor. So pretty cool plants to add. Um, we've, We've been familiar with echinaceas as, as um, perennials vegetatively propagated. And this is uh, the Darwin perennials uh, sombrero series, which is, has been a really good performer for the last two or three years. Um, but, but Pan American Seed is now coming out, or Keeft, I guess it would be, um, is coming out with um, some of these bright colors, but they're growing from seed. And so this is the Artisan series, and there's a couple of colors out on that, and um, they have looked good. They're, they are establishing as well as the uh, Sombrero series, um, but they also have really good first year performance if you grow them early enough, start them early enough from seed. So in fact, I've still got some flowering now. Um, the first year, they actually flower later into the summer because, you know, you're a little bit later planting them and everything. So, but that's, it's all good. 
Um, some new colors in the uh, Serena and Serenita series. Got purple and blue improved on the on the left for the Serena and Serenita lavender improved on the right. So they're continuing to make improvements, and I'm hoping to see some um, some new colors coming in this as well um, in the future. So that's pretty cool. Of uh, this Celosia soul lizard leaf um, is something that was new last year. And I think that it's, um, it, they, it was kind of, it was experimental last year. And so now they're getting it out there. And I think we're learning how to grow it a little bit better too. This is one that does a little bit better. If, you, if you're doing it earlier in the season, it needs to have some, some long days to keep it, keep it from flowering um, so that you get the foliage. Because you, on this one, you don't really need the flowers. This is, this is all about the foliage. So anyway, and you get it up into the summer with the long days that keeps it keeps flowering down as well. So anyway, very heat tolerant is very interesting plant. And I think very useful for mixed containers too. Yeah, I think they, they used it a lot too in the beds just to set off other things. And mm -hmm. I noticed that they had a lot of it planted around just mm -hmm. not even yeah. in a weird kind of way, but just, just in a supporting role. Mm -hmm. so. Good for that, yeah. Uh, the Vinca Valiant series, um, this is one that's been out that, that also has some disease resistance in it. And uh, in the back, you'll see the Apricot Improved, which was an improvement on that one last year. And so they can, they're continuing to add colors and improve the colors that they have. Uh, so this is a series that I think we're going to see around for, for a long time. Uh, this is a fun plant, the Salvia Lancelot. Um, it's grown from seed. It's got fuzzy leaves, beautiful flowers. I mean, there's a lot going for it here. Um, it's not particularly a fan in the humidity. I have better luck with it in containers in Northeast Texas. I think as you get further, again, this is going to be a further west, Central Texas. I think by the time you get to Fort Worth and then up into Lubbock and places like that where you've got a little bit drier climate, that this is cool. I've also this year tried growing it in clay pots. And I think it's going to, it's looking good in that. So, you know, kind of like you'd grow lavender or something that likes that real sharp drainage and aeration in the soil and everything. So anyway, this is, this is a pretty cool plant. And this, this is um, what it does first year from seed, you know, so you get a really cool show um, from a very small plant very quickly. So that's a lot of fun. And there's some of that. Um, Lizard leaf. Um, yep. There you go. Right there. Showing yeah. how to use it, <laughs> but but I that that salvia is really a nice different look. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anything with that silver leaf, fuzzy leaf like that in a salvia. So that, I mean, not to that degree. So it's yeah. really. I have a yeah. question about the celosia. Um, uh -huh. How 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 does the flower look like? I mean, or there's just no flower yet on these. Uh, Plants. Well, it, it, it can flower if conditions are right. And it's more of kind of a long uh, wand shape um, flower, more like that type of celosia as opposed to the flame type. You know, it's more of a narrow, just a narrow uh, plume or whatever, um, if that more makes a, sense. More of a bit of a pigweed looking flower. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Uh, they did have a new color in the megawatt series. This is uh, Ball's contribution to, or Pan American Seed, excuse me, contribution to the um, uh, uh, large leaf begonia types. And then they've, there's been a big improvement in the Marvel series. This is the Marvel Two, um, and uh, so so anyway, these are, as you can see, they're very compact plants, but they're still the large flower that you get on an African marigold. So very cool. Cool development. Um, now moving into some of the perennials with Darwin perennials. This is something that I have been really, really impressed with. This Kapow series. I've had this is a new color that we got this year, but I've had some in the ground for for two years now, and they keep they've come back stronger every year. And this is the first Phlox series that I really have looked upon as something that I would compare to, to you know, our John Fanick and things like that, that are the few flocks that we can actually grow in Texas that are very heat tolerant. They do seem to be very powdery mildew resistant, and but there's some different colors in this series that are doing very well. So I wanted to make sure and point out this new one. That's what it looks like in the ground. And these are, these are pretty compact during the first year. Um, and then they will get a little bit bigger and, and 
uh, you know, be a little bit later blooming in the garden. So I still have good flowering in July with these things. So it's many weeks of flowers. So it's a pretty, pretty cool plant. So something to watch. They've also got a new series of Budlia that um, is impressing me. I love this cranberry color. Um, they're, they're much smaller stature than some of the big Budlias that you've seen in the past so that they're good for containers, um, but they're also doing well in the ground. And I typically, for some reason, don't have real good luck with Budlias in the ground, but um, these look good in the ground and in containers. So pretty cool plant. These new heucheras I, I like. Um, the one at the top, I'm, I'm particularly interested in because it's got such good vigor. And, and that's showing up in the, in the field trial. These are though, heucheras tend to be really good container plants for us. You know, a shade container plant and uh, as opposed to trying to grow them as perennials in the ground. Um, so anyway, that's something that you might consider um, I, because there's so many pretty newer ones out there and they're also becoming more heat tolerant with the breeding. You know, this is a, the movement in the right direction. Um, for all of these. They've got a new series of Monarda that's much more compact and stays nice and compact and green instead of yellowing out by the end of the season. So I think that's a pretty cool development. A new color in the Uptick Coreopsis series, uh, which is a very good series for us. And then this new uh, Artemisia's Sun Fern, um, there's, um, what is it, Olympia and Arcadia. Olympia is the one in the center. And then on the both sides is, is the um, Arcadia. And um, these I at first was a little bit uh, unsure about, but they said they'd take full sun. So I planted a mountain full sun and so far they're looking great. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm uh, guardedly optimistic that this is gonna be a really cool new fo foliage edging type plant for us and something that you could also use in containers uh, as well. Uh, they, a couple of new colors. The Bloomify series is, is a bigger series um, and also uh, reportedly sterile. Uh, they're certified sterile, according to the literature here. And uh, they've got some new colors, the orange and the pink. And then Lucky is a more compact series, which, which has been around for a number of years. But they've got some new, a new color, the pink one in the center over there um, is a new color for that series, which is a good one. And then the Shamrock, I think, is kind of in between those two as far as vigor goes. And this is a newer introduction with all these new colors. So anyway, still lots of development in the world of Lantana, which is awesome for us because it's such a great heat tolerant plant. A few new colors. Here's another one of those narrow leaf types. Uh, this one's called Spitfire, which is a beautiful color. And then here's um, uh, three new coleus and all kind of with this theme of the green edge that we were talking about earlier. And so this is, this is some pretty cool new stuff um, coming out. that's a little bit different than some of the things we've seen on the market, you know, fairly recently. So uh, a couple of new colors in this Angelonia Angel Mist series, the spreading part of the series. Um, this is this is a uh, pink one, and then we've got the uh, dark purple. And again, a good hanging basket plant. And and I think last time you guys also talked about the uh, the red, white, and blue one up there combination, which was which is also pretty awesome. So and Archangel Purple improved. And I think as as uh, vegetative ones go, the flowering on these types are an improvement over what they used to be as far as, you know, going out of flower during the summer. You know, sometimes we have that issue with Angelonia and especially on the vegetative ones. And uh, I, I think we're beginning to improve that, the breeders are, but there's still, we still don't really know what causes that. And if we could ever figure that out, it would be, be really cool. But, um, but anyway, meanwhile, they tend to do very well in containers, especially, so. And there we go, there's our group. Um, behind us is the beach at Carmel, and we saw some beautiful scenes. This is uh, Watsonville, uh, seen from Hecker Pass. We had some good food and saw a couple of good sunsets. We get a beach moment every once in a while. We've been doing this long enough that we figure out how to, how to uh, you know, get down to the beach so that we can at least sit there and look at it for a few minutes before we have to run on to the next place. So anyway, that's all I've got. So. Any more comments, Laura, or questions from anybody? That was so much fun. I was like, just, you know, um, being back in California, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Y'all have any questions or any plants that you have tried out from this exciting group of 
Uh, Brad, I do have a question about one of the Orino lilies, you know, the compact ones that you mm -hmm. shared in the, uh, uh, in the presentation. Um, it, it has, I mean, it, the, most of them just flower for seven, maybe 10 days in my experience, and then that's it, right? There, some of them are fairly short lived. Now, it, it kind of, these look to me like those ones that I showed you look to me like they had a little bit taller rack of flowers so that they have more flowers per plant. And, and if, if you can find lilies like that, then you do get a little bit longer flowering period because it, um, it just takes them longer to flower up the, up the racine. I see. So, um, also, I think it's important when you're growing, a, like the oriental lilies tend to bloom a little bit later in the summer. So I think you need to put them in some shade mm -hmm. so that they don't burn up in the sun. Whereas there's some other lilies like the, there's some of the LA hybrids that we've been trialing here. Um, the American series in particular that blooms earlier in the season so that you get like, like June. And so it's a milder time of the year. So you tend to get several weeks of flowering out of those okay, I see. as opposed to some of the ones that flower later in the summer. So I see. Um, you're also doing a webinar with uh, Dr. Charlie Hall uh, this following week, right? Yes. Um, on, that'll be on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Okay. Uh, are you going to talk about something different from your presentation here or? Uh... Yes, it's the, the presentation on Tuesday is basically results from the trials that are in the ground right now. Okay, and so, I see. Yeah. So we'll be some of I will be mentioning some of the same plants, but the pictures you will see is what they look like in my field. Gotcha. Well, that's that there's a lot of value. There's a lot of value to the local trials that you have there. Uh, in Overton. So I think I sent that out in the email uh, to, to everyone, uh, you know, watch out for that link and register for the link to listen, you know, to uh, Dr. Pemberton's trial information, specifically at the uh, Overton location. Um, Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, anything else that uh, Brand and Laura, you want to share with us today? Not that's all I got. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you Plans so much. great. There's always new stuff. It's very exciting. It's just, it's just yeah. a lot of fun. Okay. All right. Uh, then um, well, that's the end of our webinar today. Uh, You'll have a, a great afternoon. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Thanks, everybody.